Hello, hello! Perfidious Pete here, deep in the grips of gaming disorder. Now an officially categorized and classified medical disorder, by the way, according to the ICD-11, in XCOM, War of the Chosen. I'm a little... You know, salty is the wrong word here. I was I saw a news headline today that the uh, ICD-11, which is... Uh, it's a document that basically just categorizes and classifies diseases is being rev uh, like revised for the newest edition because they haven't done it in like 20 years and they figured, hey, maybe it's time we update this with all the new stuff we discovered. And they added an entry for something called Gaming Disorder, which, uh, like loosely paraphrased the ICD-11, describes as a pattern of pervasive gaming behavior which negatively affects your social or occupational effectiveness and continues to progress even in the face of negative consequences. And it has me... Again, salty is not the right word. It has me eh, I, I, conflicted, I guess, is the term I'm looking for. Because I know, I promise, I guarantee fucking to you that by the end of this week, it's Wednesday today, by the way. By the end of this week, I'm going to see at least one headline in a major media outlet that contains the words gaming disorder next to the word Fortnite. And it's got me pissed off because the media is going to like deliberately misconstrue this classification to try and paint a picture that video games are bad. You shouldn't play video games. They're bad. And that makes me angry. They're trying to blame violence on video games. Now they're going to try and blame other negative conditions on video games. Whereas if you actually take 90 seconds and go read the ICD's draft, by the way, draft entry, the ICD 11 is not published yet. But if you go read their draft entry for gaming disorder, it reads much like the, I mean, the verbiage is almost identical to any other number of addictive behaviors that don't typically include a chemical variety. Like, I mean, actually, it's even very similar to some of the ones that include a chemical variety, like, say, you know, drug addiction or alcoholism. The verbiage is very similar to those, and somebody right now is going, but Pete, those two things actually cause chemical changes in the body. And you're right, I don't want to imply that these sorts of addictions are exactly the same as being addicted to a substance problem. Substances are a different thing, but there are other things to which one can become addicted that don't cause direct chemical changes in your body. For instance, like, you know, sex or pornography. Those are things to which a person can become addicted and are a categorized and recognized legitimate uh, disorder in the ICD-10, which is the old version. You can become addicted to those things because the verbiage simply says it's a behavior that you engage in, which you continue to engage in to the detriment of your own life. And it, it, this, this actually, I think the draft entry for the ICD-11 is a good thing. Because it recognizes, hey, games are another thing to which people who are susceptible to addictive tendencies can, in fact, become addicted. And that opens the door for them to get treatment for those conditions, treatment which they may very desperately need. And this is not to say that there are plenty of people affected with gaming disorder. That's a bunch of bullshit. This is going to be a very, very, very uncommon disorder, sort of like sex addiction, things of that nature. It's, it's not something you're going to see tons of cases of, but there are, in all likelihood, uh, to be definitively, there are probably people who legitimately have this problem. And the nice thing about ICD-11 classifying it as a disease is now those people can get treatment for those disorders and stuff like with their insurance will pay for it because it's a recognized disorder. So that's good. And I think the, uh, the ICD-11, by the way, is published by the World Health Organization. I think they've made a good and positive change. They're actually doing the right thing. My problem is with the way I know I just I can feel it deep in my soul, deep in my soul, like the certainty that I will both die alone and go to hell. I know deep, deep down that the media is going to construe this in a video games bad, man. And I just I just. What I really just want is for the fucking baby boomers to die so that people who think video games are weird will just be gone anymore. The They'll just go away. Them. And the only people that are left on the planet are people for whom video games have always been a thing. And they understand and accept that, that, you know, engaging in video gaming in your leisure time is no different than, say, reading a book or watching television or, you know, walking around or gardening. It's just another thing that people do now we're sorry, boomers, that you didn't do it when you were growing up, because instead of playing Pokemon Yellow, you all went to Woodstock and rolled around in the mud and did a lot of recreational drugs and had casual sex. 
we don't do that because in the generation in which we grew up, casual sex could fucking kill you. Thanks for ruining that force, by the way, boomers. I'm still pinning that one on you, motherfucking yuppie bastards. What's the long and the short of your diatribe here, Pete? I don't know. I'm salty at the media because I know they're going to try and sensationalize something that definitely should not be sensationalized and also fuck boomers forever. What are you doing in the campaign here, Pete? You've been ranting for like the last roughly 10 minutes. You're right. I should probably focus more on the gameplay. Although that's the reason I kind of went off my little diatribe there is that there's not a whole hell of a lot to focus on here as far as gameplay goes. We're basically just killing time. What are we killing time for? I would like to fight the Archon King. I want to go in. I, I really want to just go in the campaign. I probably won't even fight the Berserker Queen because we're going to beat her and it's not really going to matter. The reason I want to defeat the Archon King before that happens, however, is I don't want the Archon King to show up on the mission where we got to go raid that tower because that happened to us in a previous campaign and it really pissed me off. Also, it made that mission stupefyingly difficult, and I don't want to have to endure that shit again. So this time, we're just going to kill time until his ass shows up and we can murder him. Let's go get these supplies, because it doesn't really matter what we're doing at this point. We're just waiting for a mission. I suppose we could actually just go trigger a mission. Like, we have other facilities that don't have alien rulers. We could just go kick the door down on one of those. Maybe that's the right play here. Everybody's recovered from their wounds. Let's grab these supplies. Bruce Wayne has got his negative traits removed. That's fantastic. We didn't get a mission, so... Like, do you have a powerful alien ruler here? No. Well, good. We're going to go burn this to the fucking ground, then. For Indonesia. The fact that it only has eight enemies on it is encouraging, because that means maybe, just maybe, Mr. Archon King will show up. And if he does, hopefully this time we can kick his teeth down his throat and make sure that he never, ever, ever comes back. How's the team look? We got Elvis Presley. Uh, Doc Holliday. Who is your... Who's your buddy? You're like... Chris Knight is like your buddy, though, right? Yeah, we need to get... We need to get him in here. So, Gert Rafto. Like, you don't have a pal, though, right? You're... Yeah, you're friend... Oh, you're bonded with Mad Mardigan. We should actually get Mad Mardigan in this. We definitely... Well, Elvis is our solo boy. You know? Uh, but we... Elvis is like the one guy who still needs EXP. Jim Morrison, you're bonded to Iceman. Get the hell out of here. Shaherless. I know I looked and see who you're... Okay, so you're bonded to Robbie Gallagher. We actually don't want either of you guys because neither one of you has Bladestorm, I believe. You do not have Bladestorm, correct? You do not. So let's get rid of you. No, let's get rid of you, though. Stop going into edit mode. Get, just be gone from my sight. Gert Rafto... Who are you bonded to? Mad Mardigan. We do want a Mad Mardigan on this, though. Mad Mardigan is great. In fact, he's the greatest swordsman who has ever lived. So let's grab a Mad Mardigan. And then Doc Holliday. Is Chris Knight available? If he is, we're bringing him. The real genius. Because he also has Bladestorm. This is the team we're going to go with. All of our weapons need to become available. Make armors available. Revitalize a soldier. Don't really need it. Batman, you're going to be carrying one of those wonderful toys. Who else needs a gun? Doc Holliday, you've got a gun, and you're going to be carrying some AP rounds to carve through that armor. Mad Mardigan, you're not much of a shot. Real Genius, if I recall, you have quick draw. You're not like a fantastic pistolier. And f Ooh, you don't have Blade Storm. You do have quick draw and Fortress. Fortress is potentially quite useful, actually. You know what? We're going to bring you as well. You also bring, however, a Mimic. Mad Mardigan, you're a Blade Stormer, and when you go Blade Storm, you Blade Storm all the way. And Gert Rafto, I think you just also, like, your claim to fame is that you have Fortress, right? It's like your one bit has Fortress and is paired with Mad Mardigan. As Fortress is paired with Mad Mardigan. That's really all he's got. But the paired with Mad Mardigan is going to get you bygones on this one. So let's give you, you know what? We should give you like dragon rounds instead. Maybe we can set the Archon King on fire and slow his roll a little bit. Some more AP rounds. We're definitely going to want to hang on to, man, Elvis is so good though. We want to have Elvis carry the, 
Mimic Beacon. I mean, Elvis has also got Quick Draw and Blade Storm. You know, Elvis... Okay, we're going to switch this up. Elvis, get rid of that med kit. And instead, take some AP rounds. I'm tempted to actually give Elvis Venom rounds so we could get that guy burning and poisoned on the same moment. And then... Let's just have you then go with the med kit, Mad Mardigan. Sorted, sorted, let's get stuck in. Pete, you know, you have like a thousand hours in XCOM. Do you think maybe you have gaming disorder? Uh, no. I mean, I definitely don't. I, I go to work with a shocking and honestly unpleasant frequency. Make my meals. I mean, I bathe and maintain my person and home relatively well. I'm not suffering any particular negative consequences from my gaming behaviors. Other than the fact that it contributes to my sedentary lifestyle, but honestly, if I weren't gaming, I would be doing something else that was sedentary, like reading a book. Hey, I see the 11. When are you going to classify reading disorder as, as, as a thing? Actually, may already be a thing. I honestly don't know. Where's the headline, by the way, from the media where they're going to be like, sex addiction, are we having too much sex? And then they're like, where they propose that the human species never engage in the genitive act again, thus eradicating our species from the planet, which, you know, at this point, we kind of deserve. Just like we voluntarily self-select for extinction. Be like, yeah, you're right, we're all addicted to sex because it's pleasant and it feels good and it rewards those reward centers of our brain with uh, pleasure chemicals. Better not engage in that. I mean, it's clearly detrimental to our society. It's not the greatest weapon in our evolutionary arsenal that has allowed us to become the dominant species on the planet. Nah, sex is bad. Video games are bad. Anything that you enjoy, basically, it's bad. The media is looking for a way to take it away from you. Move to designated position and place the X4 charges. Not our first rodeo, Bradford. Speaking of addiction, see now, Bradford, there's a guy who knows a thing or two about actual addiction. I trust in your command. John Bradford's had like 12 livers implanted in his body, and he keeps drinking despite the fact that everybody's like, John, the liquor is destroying your liver. Have you looked in the mirror? You're 21 years old, John. You're 21 years old. Look at yourself. You look like a man in his 50s. Your abdomen is just swollen and bloated because of the cirrhosis. And Bradford's like, yeah, pour me another couple fingers. See, now that's that's an actual problem drinker right there. John Bradford has a sincere substance abuse problem. He also plays Call of Duty while he's drinking. So, you know, Bradford maybe has a, he's maybe double dipping. He's got gaming alcoholism disorder. It's a new disease I just coined in this second called GAD. I comply. Hmm. I'm not seeing an abundance of enemies thus far, and it has me a little nervous. Now, granted, the shadow thing did say there were only eight total enemies on the map. And it won't let me switch off this guy, which means we spotted one somewhere. Damn, I saw the wings and got excited. I thought that was going to be the Archon King, and I thought we might have a shot to take him out. I really, really, really don't want to fight that guy on the purple, like, open vagina lotus antenna tower thing. It kind of looks like a lotus flower, but it's also kind of vaginal because, you know, lotuses are also kind of vaginal. Also, you know, I see vagina everywhere just because it's how my brain works. For the cause, Mad Mardigan. For the cause. I'm tempted to have Mad Mardigan dash in here, but I think we best wait until the whole team is together, because when Mad Mardigan dashes in, he's almost certain to pop another pod. We could get an eye on that backdrop from Doc Holiday. If we do have you dash in, just in theory, what can you do? Well, you could almost certainly kill this guy. The robot won't take a reaction move, so we won't get anything out of that. We could just have you come hit the Archon. Can we Arc Wave maybe? Get more mileage out of an Arc Wave? Not on you. What if we Arc Wave... Honestly, it's probably not worth it. Let's just come in here, hit the Archon, go for the damage, go for the rend, and see if maybe the robot will move so we can get a little bit of Blade Storm action. Or maybe this guy will be really dumb and run past us. 
Or time could stop, like uh, we're a man with a magic watch in a Twilight Zone episode. Just call me McNulty. This guy's almost certainly just gonna go on Overwatch. The Archon probably will get Blade Storm when it moves. Yeah, so the, we're gonna get double damage here on our friend the Archon. Robot, of course, is not going anywhere. That's unfortunate, but not unexpected. And his little pal went and hid behind a tree there. We should have liked to have gotten some extra bonus focus for Mad Mardigan, but hey, things don't always work out the way you expected. We do need somebody who has Shadow Step here to come and finish off this robot. And it's looking like that someone is going to be the Bat. So, Batman, get in here. And maybe... You know what? Can you arc wave into that guy? No, he has fled in precisely the optimal direction to avoid exactly that fate. Shadow Step up here, knock this robot out of Overwatch. Job's done. Also, Batman managed to shut him down, which is kind of beautiful. No momentum move. Instead, we're going to focus on parrying. Here, Rafto. I mean, I don't want you to get focus. I would really... You know who should have focus? Well, Elvis. I was going to say Elvis should have focus, but Elvis doesn't have Ionic Storm. Somebody with Ionic Storm needs to be taking this focus. And I guess that somebody is this Archon. Or rather, is Chris Knight. Taking it from the Archon into his own delicious form. And he's going to pick up two points. That's beautiful. We love it when we bonus focus on a kill. And now we've got a fully charged Ionic Storm ready to unleash the hurricane. Put the whoop ass on somebody. Elvis, you're quick enough to get here. Get up here and maybe take a shot at this Elite Trooper. Elvis does have Blade Storm. So Elite Trooper, we may not get the kill from this, but Elvis will get him. He'll just get him on a reaction. Doc Holiday, I don't really know what to do with you. I mean, it doesn't really matter because even if he tries to shoot at you, you're still you're still gonna die. I mean, Doc Holiday's still gonna. Elvis will still kill him. Robot shot down. Oh, good, perfect time to spawn the Archon King. Exactly what we wanted. On the plus side, he is here, so we've got that going for him. The fact that he has another Archon friend is most unfortunate, and the fact that we have subsequent moves that we're gonna have a difficult time using. Also unfortunate. I'm tempted here to just go on Overwatch and end our... You know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. Just Overwatch and end our turn. This guy is certainly dead. Elvis is going to kill him. He also sent him flying into that wall head first like he got fired out of a catapult. Don't know what this guy's going to do. We do have a lot of people who are parrying already, which is helpful. He's just going to double move and do nothing. Well then... Doc Holiday, take a shot at the Archon King with your lightning hands. All right, sweet. Good shot. That also doesn't cost it. Has the added benefit of not costing us an action. That guy is too high up, though. Nobody's going to be able to get up to him because he's too far away. We got to wait for him to get closer. So what's our optimal strategy here? You know what, Batman? Try this. If we can pull the Archon King past a couple Blade Storms, I don't know if he's obligated to go for the Mimic Beacon or not. He should be. Nope. He's just going to stand up there and shoot us forever, so fuck me, I guess. Elvis, I don't suppose you can get... Nobody can get up to where he's at, though. Well, okay then. You want to play this game? We're going to start Mars Voltaing the shit out of you. We really need some people with more focus to be doing that. He's just going to stand up here and snipe us. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. He's just going to stand here all day and snipe us. I don't suppose there's any chance we could get an Ionic Storm up there. Of course not. We're going to have to have Chris Knight go in and take a bonus action. He'll stop sniping now that we've gotten close, by the way. This, I, I'm telling you, the Archon King is the most obnoxious piece of shit in the whole fucking game. Perfect. He forced us to activate the Gatekeeper because that's what we really needed to do was fight six guys at once. Yeah, he also never fucking misses, which is bullshit.
Well, we're completely dick then. So if we bonus action our boy, is that just gonna get a shot? Like, this shouldn't actually count as an action, but I guarantee the alien ruler is gonna get a reaction move off of this. He did not. Oh, no, never mind. I can't avoid their attacks for much longer. Like, at all, in fact. You're not gonna be able to avoid them again, ever. Okay, Chris Knight. Well, come up here in Ionic Storm. It's probably... Don't give me... Don't don't even tell me you can't fucking hit this man with an Ionic Storm. You've got to be fucking shitting me, though. You're not fast enough to get up there? Unfucking believable I don't suppose you can actually come in here and put it to use against the... Uh, of course not, because that would be a reasonable thing. I love it when our no-gun team just has a man stand next to them who can't really do anything. That's fucking beautiful. That robot's eventually gonna wake up, by the way. Well, Mad Mardigan, I guess it'll be on you. We're gonna have some people die here. I'm almost certain. Just because this guy's just he's just gonna sit up there and snipe, 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 and there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, now you move? Yeah, fuck you. So who bonus actions Mad Mardigan? Gert Rafto, you do when you have literally nothing else to do with your time. Okay, Mad Mardigan, I need you to come up here and Ionic Storm in this tile, which puts this man in an Ionic... Oh, good, Mad Mardigan has a ton of focus, too. That's perfect. All of one... Did four damage. We will get to blade storm him some ish. By the way, it's important to point out at the end of this turn, we do still have a fucking gatekeeper to mess around with. And Mad Mardigan's gonna be very injured. Well, I don't suppose we could get an Ionic Storm up here, can we? Sure, let's do that. It does put another Blade Stormer next to him, and Chris Knight has enough to make this one actually count. And you should be getting Blade Stormed when you drop in here. You actually dropped our boy. Go ahead and take your bullshit reaction move. We didn't Blade Storm him, despite the fact that we had two Blade Stormers standing right next to him. That's, yeah, makes perfect sense. I'm tempted to just end my turn, except for the fact that Doc Holiday is, if we do that, very definitely going to die. So as much as I don't like this move, we kind of have to rend this robot. These guys, by the way, are definitely going to get caught in a gateway, and all of them are going to take damage, including Elvis, who may just flat out die. Yeah, and just end our turn. That heavy mech can't do anything. He'll get blade stormed to pieces the moment he tries. I hate, I hate the Archon King so much. I hate him so much. We didn't really have a whole lot of trouble with the Viper King because, you know, he's on the ground and stays on the ground where he belongs. This guy, however, is a completely armored to the goddamn teeth fucking tank who never misses. And now we got to worry about the gatekeeper and his 89 friends. At least the codexes won't do much. The gatekeeper did nothing. I don't understand how that works, and honestly, I don't care. Also, you do not have Blade Storm. Well, let's see if we can generate a bonus Blade Storm out of Mad Mardigan. I want this fucker to die. I want him dead. Make him be not alive anymore. He has eight health left. There's no way we're going to be able to do eight damage. And we're going to have one... I do not want to have to fight this piece of shit again, though. Oh, 
Where's Mad Mardigan? I, I don't want to have to fight this guy again, and we're going to have to fight this fucker again. It's not going to go through his armor. He's going to escape with four health. Get blade stormed when you try and make it to the exit, though. Of course not. I hate literally every single thing. Well, now all we have to do is try and come up with a way for everyone else to not die. That's going to be a very difficult task, actually. This world is ours. Everybody needs to be parrying. Not that parrying is really going to help us much here. We're definitely going to have to plop another Mimic Beacon down. Speaking of which, who has that Mimic Beacon so that we can make sure and get it into play? Yeah, clone all you want. I don't, it's not you that's the problem. It's the Archon King and that reaction moves just being flat out broken. That's the problem. Batman, you threw a Mimic Beacon already. Who's got the other one? Someone who has already taken their turn because, of course, they did. Well, Elvis, can you get a... Like, we just need to make sure everybody's parrying, then. That's going to be the best we can do. The Codexes will help us out in that respect because at least they'll generate more people. Plus one focus for the king. That's right, mama. You may have shot me in my liver, but uh, just like John Bradford, the king's liver is bloated and swollen. It's immune to damage thanks to the necrosis, the cirrhotic necrosis. Don't, don't stand next to anybody else, though. In fact, you know what, Batman? Come up here and stand next to this gatekeeper. Maybe we can goad him into shooting at you. If nothing else, when he tries to kill you, you can hit him with the blade storm and maybe get some cheap damage. Garafto's gonna do exactly nothing, though. You've been a real help on this mission, Rafto, by the way. Thanks for coming along, buddy. Appreciate it. You've been doing fantastic work. Think you can get a pistol shot out of this? Well, it wasn't a complete waste. You did literally one thing. Oh, right. There's another Archon over there. Blazing Pinions is not terrible for us. It just means we're going to have to move, which we were going to do anyway. Also, that guy decided to take a Blade Storm for his trouble. So who else getting Blazing Pinions here? It looks like the Gatekeeper was in a Blazing Pinions as well. We've got some time before that Blazing Pinions lands. He's either going to gateway or he's going to shoot at Elvis. He's going to gateway. This should not hit Elvis. It's not that big. He used it to make a zombie. I'm very glad we moved away from the enemy corpses. That is helpful. You will teleport and almost certainly psionic bomb some irrelevant target. Yeah. Disabled your own codex's weapon. Well, that's brilliant. I wonder what she's going to do then. You'll take a shot at someone who is almost certainly parrying. Or alternatively, you'll critical the shit out of Gert Rafto, because why wouldn't you? You're just flat out dead. I'm very salty about the way this mission has gone. I'm not going to lie. And it had, it's, again, it has everything to do with the Archon King being broken, stupid. Just ridiculousness to an unheard of degree. So, Chris Knight, I think we're probably just going to have you chuck a Mimic Beacon here. Get out of the relative disarray that's going to occur when this Blazing Pinions lands. Batman, just be out of the slop, mostly. I realize that hitting these guys with melee attacks is a very suboptimal way to kill a Gatekeeper. I kind of don't want to kill it. You're going to need to step away from him there, Batman, because he's going to explode when he dies. Gert Rafto. Will that kill him? Yes, it will. Elvis, do you have Fortress? Elvis has Fortress. Good. Elvis, you can just... No. Just console. What's going on here? Hit all of the buttons, Pete. All of the wrong buttons. Oh, Pete, you know just how to push my buttons. Yes, I do. All the wrong ones. Kill this gatekeeper, though. You will explode. Elvis is immune to explosions. Elvis doesn't give a shit. 
Zombie goes down. Hey, made us a little bit of freebie there. And Elvis can then come over here and rend this piece of garbage. And I can be filled with loathing and disgust. The Archon King needs some tweaks. That's that's all I'm going to say. Although that, you know, he... Yeah, you know what? He does need some tweaks. Because even at times that we have fought the Archon King, where we fought him not with people who were limited to exclusively melee attacks, which admittedly is probably the worst potential way to fight him. But even when we fought him with a regular team, he still has been ripping... He's like way, way, way more difficult... Then the other alien rulers combined. Double focus pop for Mad Mardigan. We love it when he does that. This guy's just going to drop a blazing pinions. It feels like what we should do is maybe rend this man and then just move away. We could do that. We just want to make sure we're not near a bomb. So hopeful we might get a critical and kill him so we wouldn't have to worry about the blazing pinions, but that did not happen. So instead, run away from the explosion. And you know what, real genius? Like, if you've got any kind of... Shit. I was hopeful you'd have enough focus, but... Instead of a mimic beacon, why don't you just shoot him and then everything is dead? Elvis has a momentum move here. Elvis, just come over here, I guess. Get closer to where you're ultimately going to need to be when we want to evacuate this mission. What took six damage? It wasn't one of our team, was it? I think it might have been a jug full of acid that took that damage. Batman, why don't you... Are you going to be able to get there? Yeah. Not if you... You know what? It's fine. I was going to have you pick up some focus, but that focus ultimately doesn't matter at all. Gert Rafto, get your ass up here. Elvis... Really, just like everybody get back in a pile so we can leave. Get in a pile and don't get set on fire. That's mostly what we're looking for. Mad Mardigan, you can grab the extra focus, because if we need Nionic Storm, you're a good person to deliver that. As the fastest man in all of XCOM, you're a solid potential delivery system. How long you been sitting on that uh, conversational drop there, Bradford? It's like you've been sitting back, biding your time. Just you had one clever thing to say all. It's like you went to a dinner party and you pre-scripted part of a conversation in your head. And you've just been waiting for the right opportunity to deliver your little scripted bit. So that you look specially erudite and clever. Whenever you've heard Bradford tell a good anecdote at a dinner party, just know that it was scripted. Like he worked it out hours before the party in his head. There was nothing spontaneous about it at all. Menace one five status confirmed. X yeah, let's fucking get out of here. Move to the extraction point for immediate evac. I like the immediate evac part because I'm sick of this goddamn mission and I'm sick of the alien rulers. Specifically, mostly just you know the Archon King. I'm the Archon King. So sick of that guy. Everybody gonna make it in? Batman, can you get in here? Yeah. Is everybody in? Everybody inzies? All in? Good. Let's let's go then. I'm on my way out. We don't need to bother hanging around on this one, because the only way Elvis at this point is getting a promotion is if we send him on a covert op. He's not going to be able to kill, and he can never kill enough or steal enough or inflict enough pain on others to ever fill the hole that is in the middle of... Why are you guys not able to extract, though? I'm leaving the because the extraction zone is under a building and it just won't let you extract if there's a building in the way. Which is, one, reasonable, but two, you shouldn't let me throw that there, then. Can we leave now? Good. Go. Yeah, it's beyond time for us to go. It's actually time for this whole campaign to go, and I'd really like it to go, except for the stupid-ass Archon. You know what, at this point, maybe we just go ahead. Because we did leave him with, like, what, two, three, four health? Something that we can kill him in a single hit. Like, all we have to do is damage him, and it doesn't matter. He's he's actually weaker than a regular Archon at this point. Good. We're going to go do the Lotus. That'll be our next mission, then. We'll, we'll kick this one into overdrive and start pushing to the end. 
Just, you know, I've got other different video games to play so that I can feed my gaming disorder. I mocked the condition because it's topical and I'm looking for content. But otherwise, I'm, I mock it because I know it's going to be so overblown in the media. I'm telling you, by the end of the week, like CNN, Fox News, one of the major... It's, this isn't going to be just a small time thing. One of the major outlets is going to cover this story, and you're definitely going to see that next to the word Fortnite. Just because Fortnite is the game that's popular enough now that the talking heads in the media might actually be aware of its existence. Like the fact that all of their grandkids and probably at this point great grandkids are playing the Fortnite means that it'll be uh, in the baby boomers just all like they'll they'll they won't know what it is or what the game is about or even have ever seen anyone play it. But they'll know it's a thing that the kids these days do just like back in their day when they were all smoking the reefer. Nowadays, kids are playing the Fortnite. Why, why you gotta be so stodgy, old people? Just because you're, you know, putting years on doesn't necessarily mean you can't be open to new things or new ideas. Just maintain an open mind. At what, what birthday is it that you lose the ability to still have a sense of wonder about the new things that come in the universe? I don't know, I'm pretty old, but whatever birthday that is, I mean, I guess I still haven't hit it yet. Anyway, I'm going to tell you one thing I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit the end of this episode. And possibly I'm going to hit the talking head who I see say Fortnite and gaming addiction in the same sentence. But that'll have to happen later. Look for the, the subsequent news headline where you see the Internet nobody, Perfidious Pete, arrested for assault. That'll be a good headline. That'll be on your local news, though, because I'm definitely not important enough to make any kind of major outlet. If you enjoyed the episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, support really does mean a lot. If you'd like to see me inevitably arrested for a much deserved assault, by the way, that's going to be my defense when I go to court is that, you know, he, he needed a beating. Might consider subscribing as well. New episodes every single day. Right now, thanks very much for watching. I got a beating to deliver. I'll see you again soon.